Okay, so I was just adjusting the shadows on the teeth. And then of course, those effects, I can just take their overall opacity up and down. Than the layer itself. So without effects, with effects. Okay. What if I want to fill it with something a little more interesting than just shadows, right, and gradations? Well, you can also apply full layer effects to groups rather than just to individual layers. So if you double click on your, your folder for your group, you'll get the same options. And that's perfect for my head wrap, which has the central shape and then has the two little triangular shapes. Now this time I'm going to play with Pattern Overlay, which is like Gradient Overlay, except it fills it with a vector pattern. And you can choose what those patterns might be, and you can even import and create your own pattern by loading what's called an ASL. And Photop does not come with a lot of patterns already built in. In fact, it looks like this is it. But even with just that pattern, I can play with the different options, like its opacity. Let's go to Pattern Overlay. Here we go, with its opacity. So you can see it, this is just a classic half drop pattern, but it's using these swirly pinwheels. But I don't like how gray it is. So here, if we click on the pattern there instead of in the preview, we can see some of the different patterns they have as options. Some of them are very, very basic. Let's go for this one. This one looks a little bit more interesting. So this is a a straight line polka dot pattern, but I can change the angle of it. See, this is a hexagonal pattern. It's very subtle. A lot of these are pretty subtle. There are linear patterns, stripe patterns, Come on, there we go. So I'm gonna play with this one. Just so you can see, I can change the angle. Let's change it to a 45 degree pattern angle. Remember, you can always type, type in the values and hit return. So now we have it at 45 degrees. I can play with the scale of it. So how big are the dots versus how subtle? Let's keep them somewhat subtle. Be right there. And then I can even offset their, their size and placement a little bit. Hmm. So set it both at zero. And make the angle a little bit more shallow. There we go. And then instead of normal mode, I'm gonna try soft light. 
so that the pattern blends in with the color underneath. That way I can increase the opacity and still have my initial color make sense. I can also try something like pin light. Those are two I often use, soft light or pin light or overlay. But I think soft light works best in this instance. Let me try pin light again. Yeah, soft light. All right. So that is what pattern overlay does. Of course, you can combine that with other things like gradient. So we can make very subtle and not dissolved. Maybe a little dissolved. <laughs> and I can try an inner sh shadow as well. That's very subtle. Ah, took me a long time just to click on things. There we go. with the hand. Well, you've seen with the, the mouth, with the eyes, with the, the water droplet, with the hair, head wrap, I've done a lot with kind of dimensionality. There is a layer style that shows you, that tries to do all the dimensionality at once, and it's called uh, texture and emboss. So if I do the effects for the whole folder, and I click on bevel and emboss at the very top, to go along with my stroke. I have to be patient. 
then I'll get all of these options for first contouring it, which basically makes it look like it's a, a 3D object a little bit by giving a highlight on one side. You can see those highlights. And giving it a shadow on the other side. And I can play with the size of it from the inner bevel. Come on. Like so. And I can soften it. And then I can play with the opacity of both the highlight, which I like, but then the opacity of the shadow I want to take down a little bit. So bevel and emboss gives you highlights and shadows at the same time. And it's going to be based on the angle that I'm using everywhere else, that global angle. If I want it to be a different angle, I can uncheck global angle. And then I can set it independent. Okay. See how that looks. Looks okay. It's a little weird. I might take down the opacity of the highlight a little bit too. Remember, all these effects can be turned on and off. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, now the last ones, because I want to try to show you everything. I can texture the hand. So I have contour so far, but I haven't done texture. If I click on texture, it goes with it. And the reason it goes with bevel and emboss is because texture requires a highlight and a shadow because it's like um, a 3D model where you're putting texture on. There we go. But you have to choose the texture, just like pattern overlay. Pattern overlay is flat, like the dots, whereas texture is going to be dynamic to the lighting. So I can choose a pattern. This time I want it just to be a little bit simpler and grainier. There we go. So this is kind of a paper texture. And I think I'll use the same effect on the yellow, maybe even on the, the eyebrows and things. And I'll just keep it simple like that. But you can also play with the depth and the size. So that's at 100%. I'll just show you if I really zoom in on that texture. You can see it's more obvious there, which actually is kind of nice. I'll keep that. All right, next. How about the base layer? Let's try a bevel and emboss on that. And in Photoshop, anyway, it will remember your last settings. And sure enough, it remembers them. So that does a nice job giving me the shadow here. It's giving me the highlight up at the top, but you just don't see it because it's covered up by that other shape. But that's kind of nice. And it's giving me that paper texture. And I can go in and I can define that texture. individually and just take its scale down a little bit. There we go.